the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Good morning. I, I think I heard a little bit of clapping there. You can certainly clap all you want for the organist, Marv Ritchie. And you can always feel free to clap in worship. So, you know, you can stand up, you can dance. Well, maybe some of you can't dance, but 
Uh, if, you know, if you want to try your best, you certainly can. I'm Pastor Paul Hennings. It's so good to be here with you this morning. Everybody online, welcome to St. Mark's Online. Let's worship the Lord by standing and singing our opening hymn. Spirit. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to spend some time in confession, and I just want to point out something that we don't talk about very often. Uh, you know, we don't come to confess our sins on Sunday mornings just to clean our slate for the week and come back and clean it again. We confess our sins to admit to God that we're sinful, and then we hear the words of forgiveness to remind us that we've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. And so as we confess our sins this morning, I want you to consider that, that this is not an act of repetition but acknowledgement before God. So will you please pray with me in silence and then together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And so God hears your prayer, and God is rich in mercy, and God loved you even when you were dead in sin, made you alive through faith in Christ Jesus. And so by grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, all of your sins are forgiven. May God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may per persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Sing 
Please stand for the singing of our Alleluia verse. Our reading for today comes from John 7, verses 33 through 44. Jesus said, I am with you for only a short time, and then I am going to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live scattered among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What did he mean when he said, You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come? On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Messiah. Still others asked, How can the Messiah come from Galilee? Does not Scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendants and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. I want to invite uh, Mr. Jerry Weber to come forward here before we get into our message today. I've given him two minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> Start your timers. The beautiful week activities that are listed in today's handout are available on St. Mark's website under the events tab. Well, Kelly and Alice both told me I have two minutes, so I gotta talk really, really fast. A couple of weeks ago, our daughter Michelle stood before you and told you about many ways to serve here at St. Mark's. Well, I'm here today to tell you, but wait, there's more. Act now, and you too can help serve others on Beautiful Week. As you can see from the handout, Beautiful Day has been expanded to Beautiful Week. And to carry that even further, starting today, we're asking for donations for Change Interrupted, Hope CDA, local elementary school teachers, and Wellington Heights. There's several tubs out in the crossings um, right in front of that um, mural for the capital campaign. We could really use your support. So please, please drop off donations throughout the week. And if nothing else, next Sunday, just come in with your arms full of donations to really help out with these organizations. The FaithWorks team came up with a list of activities you can do on your own throughout the week and opportunities where you can serve with others that you can sign up for. There's activities for all ages and skill sets. And then on Saturday the 8th, we're going to meet at St. Mark's at 8 o'clock for coffee, juice, and donuts. But we're going to tell Matt Mulbrook 8.30, that way there'll be donuts for the rest of us, okay? And after uh, send-off prayer, we'll go to our, our different locations to serve others in our community. Now, last Wednesday night at Children's Ministry, Bailey had James 2.26 on the overhead PowerPoint. And in it, James tells us that the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. And as you know, over the last couple of years, COVID has really, really put a damper on our works to speak of, and with good reason, but we're ready to move forward. We have 173 slots to fill for Beautiful Week, so please sign up now. Jesus was a servant king. Follow him, be filled with the Spirit, and serve others on Beautiful Week. Now, my wife Cindy and I will be out in the crossings at the Welcome Center after the service to answer any questions you might have or help you get registered, so... Um, please sign up to do so. Thank you.
Thanks, Jerry. And um, just to reiter reiterate what Jerry was saying, please take a look at this when you get a chance. And we have a, a beautiful week ahead of us. It starts next, next Sunday, technically next Monday, but um, October 3rd. But feel free to take a uh, look there and see what you can be involved in and how you can help. All right. Um, if you have a sermon notes handout, you know what the gospel wordle word of the day is. And it's water. And uh, I heard a complaint already this morning that too many of our gospel wordle words uh, end in S, you know, like seeds and I don't know what else would be S's, but too bad, that's how it works. Five-letter words, you know, sometimes you only have four-letter words and you got to pluralize them. I'm just kidding. Today does not have an S, it's water, because Jesus talks about water. If you want to play our gospel wordle game, you go to stmarkcr.org forward slash wordle. Uh, Matt Mulbrook, could you just raise your hand over there? Matt, you seem to be the butt of so many jokes around here. <laughs> at St. Mark's. I've just noticed that, and uh, for that, uh, I'll pray for you, okay? <laughs> I'll pray for your Wordle game, too, yes. Um, let's take a look at this gospel lesson first, and then we'll get into a little bit of the message. Uh, this is the Feast of uh, Tabernacles, or the, the Festival of Booths, and it comes about before the rainy season in Israel. And so Jesus is in Jerusalem, and he's saying these things, and people are confused because they don't know where he's going. And, uh, of course, uh, he's talking about his death and resurrection. He's not talking about going out to the Greeks. And then the last day of the festival, he, he stands up, and he says, anyone who's thirsty, come to me and, and drink. And so um, you can kind of just see this whole... Um, uh, this whole atmosphere of excitement around Jerusalem. And for Jews, it's God who provides water, not Jesus. So when he says, let anyone who th is thirsty come to me and drink, they're probably pretty shocked. That's a pretty bold claim. Because if you remember when the Jews were fleeing Egypt, Moses struck a rock. And what came out of the rock? water. And who provided it? God. They're in a desert. Deserts don't have water. But Moses strikes a rock, and then there's water. And so all the Israelites understood that water comes from God. And so Jesus says, let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. And then, of course, he says, as Scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And there's not a specific Scripture passage that he's talking about. He's just talking about what God provides for his people. Of course, the people, they don't know what, who Jesus truly is. Some say he's the prophet. They were waiting for a big prophet to come before the Messiah. Of course, we know that prophet to be John the Baptist. And then, of course, others said, hey, maybe he's the Messiah, but... They don't know that he was born in Bethlehem, as we obviously know. That's a little bit of the background for this text. And so I want to talk today about water and the theme of water kind of throughout Scripture. The first thing I want you to know, and I think everybody understands this, is water is everything for life. I'm, I'm a big space junkie kind of guy, okay? Uh, before I was called into ministry, I wanted to be, uh, work for NASA and be an astronaut and all that other stuff. And so I still very much love science. And, you know, when I think about humanity going to Mars, I hope that happens in my lifetime. There are a lot of difficulties in going to Mars, but one of those difficulties is that human beings need, yeah, and air and food, but we need water. And uh, Mars is a problem because there's no water. And same thing with the moon, there's no water except there's frozen water up top of Mars. And so we're trying to figure that out. Water is everything for life. Just look at the lonely planet from the Apollo missions. This picture, there's so much water on Earth. 
because it sustains us, it nourishes us. Water's everything for life. The beginning, Genesis 1 verse 2, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Not nothingness at this point, but the waters because God's going to create out of waters. It's the importance of water. Psalm 23, where does the good shepherd lead you by? Yes, streams of water, flowing water, beautiful water. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who is planted as a tree by water. It bears fruit throughout the year. Water is everything for life. Early civilizations settled around water. Cedar Rapids is on a river. Water is everything. You drill a well. There's Jacob's well that is famous in the Bible. There are wells all throughout Israel. We need water. If you live in Arizona, you understand the importance of water. Water is everything for life. However, scripture, in Scripture, water is something else as well. It can also mean chaos, even death. And actually, at the beginning of creation, that water there is a symbol of chaos, that God must master that chaos and create something out of that chaos. Remember Jonah and the big fish? Jonah would rather go out to sea than go to Nineveh. Nineveh, that's how badly he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Jews were scared of the sea. They were not a seafaring nation. I am scared of the sea. I'm a landlubber. I always will be, always have been. I didn't grow up on the coast. I don't surf. Not a very good swimmer. Sharks are in the water always. Water can mean chaos, even death. For the Israelites, they wrote about it. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say the flood would have engulfed us, the torrent would have swept over us, the raging waters would have swept us away. What are they even talking about? They don't live in that kind of territory, but they understood it. So do we, by the way. We understand that water can mean chaos. Don't mean to poke the bear here, but that's 2008 if you don't recognize that picture. The disciples had a healthy fear of water as well. Sea of Galilee is just basically a large basin full of deep water, and as the air flow changes and shifts over that sea, it can all of a sudden create a huge squall and so, of course, Jesus is the one who walks on this chaotic water, tells Peter to come and walk to him. Peter drowns in the water, but Jesus rescues him. It can mean certain death unless you have God on your side. So let me go back again here to the Scripture passage here. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. What a statement of Jesus when you understand how Jews thought about water. It meant everything to them, living in an arid and desert place, and at the same time they were scared to death of it. But Jesus, the good shepherd, says, come to me and drink. By the way, at the end of the festival, the, the, they had a, uh, a ritual. Jerusalem doesn't have any rivers through it. All it has is a spring underneath it. And so what they would do at the end of the festival is somebody would go, they'd have this big procession, and they would go and gather water from the spring, and they would march it all the way into the temple. And most scholars believe that Jesus is at, this, at the beginning of this, this last great day where they're drawing the water. And you could just imagine it. Everybody is walking into the temple and they're, they're, they're praising God for the water that, 
that God provides and everything else. And Jesus says, if you're thirsty, come to me. Because he was there at the beginning with the chaotic waters. And he'll be there at the end. When we all come to him in faith in heaven and we hear that there is a stream of water that comes from the tree of life right in the middle of the New Jerusalem. Water is everything. And so when you look at water over all of Scripture, there's kind of this question that comes up, and it's this. What kind of water is flowing out of us, out of me? And I have to pause my message right now, okay? Because I have to admit something that's kind of embarrassing. Y'all ready? This is totally off track, but I, I have to do it. You ever, you ever create something and you come back to it and you realize, oh no, that is totally wrong. It, nobody does that? Okay. So this week I was, did my sermon notes, da, 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 and I came back to this point right here. And I thought, hmm, that is not exactly how I wanted to say that. So I tested it with my wife and son because I just wanted to be sure how many people are going to be thinking about living water or other kinds of water. And so I asked them, Theo, I've got a question for you. If I asked you what kind of water is flowing out of you, what would you say? And he said, pee pee. <laughs> so please do not hashtag what's flowing out of me what kind of water's flowing out of you, things like this. It's one of those moments where I'm highly embarrassed. And um, so if you weren't thinking that, God bless you, okay? But when I came back to it, I thought, I really asked them what kind of water is flowing out of them? <sighs> so... Now that I've had that aside and I've gotten that out, I can feel the heat rising because I'm embarrassed. Really, the question is, what, you know, what kind of... It just doesn't even sound good. Maybe I shouldn't ask the question at all. But the point is this. There's either chaotic water or, that's, or there's water that's given by God. And Scripture kind of says, what, what kind of water's in you, right? That's the question. And by the way, Jesus asked this question to the woman at the well just three chapters before this in John. He says, do you, do you want to have some water in your life where you're never going to thirst? The kind of water that you don't need to come back to this well constantly over and over and over? If you want that kind of water, I'm the one that's going to provide it. You know, Jesus does this when he dies on the cross. It's fascinating. People usually focus at the, at the idea of blood and water flowing being a sign that Jesus is truly dead, but I think it's unique in the Gospel of John because John's all about water. He's got a lot of water in his Gospel. He's the only one. He says blood and water flowed from him. Water, that water of life. That water that means Everything. And I think as you look at this theme of water, the question you, everybody has to ask is, do I have the living water of Christ in my life or not? And I think you can look in your soul and you can look and say, is it chaotic? What's going on in my life that is just like the storms and constant churning of the waves, the foaming of the sea? If that's my life, I need more living water, the kind of water that is settled, the kind of water that I can that I can drink the kind of water that's pure and clean. And this is what Jesus offers to us. And he says, anyone who believes in him, they'll have living water flowing from them. I, I, I have to admit, I was... <laughs> okay, we only have one baptismal bowl here, all right? And it's being used in the second service. So our baptismal bowl is gone. So I would just like to put this out there for all of our 830 folks, okay? If you have a beautiful bowl and you'd like to get rid of it, we'll take it. Do you know that my grandpa was a Lutheran pastor and uh, the bowl that they used for baptisms was the same bowl that they used for pea salad? 
I'm not kidding you. It's one of my favorite stories about my grandpa. He would tell his daughters, will you go grab the, the pea salad bowl because we've got a baptism today. <laughs> All you need is water, living water. And that's what Jesus gives to us in baptism. All of us have living water flowing out of us in faith in Jesus Christ. You know what I find interesting as well, though, is that Jesus says, whoever believes in me, as Scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Well, where are they flowing to? You ever ask that question? The answer is to others. You see, when you have that living water inside of you, it is flowing out of you. And again, that's a weird statement, but it's the analogy that Jesus uses. It's like, it's like you are providing water in other people's lives that are so parched and dry. Yesterday, I was doing some work outside, and it wasn't a hot day, but I was parched. You know how when you're just absolutely dry mouth and you're, you're sweated a little bit and you're just thirsting and you get that cold glass of Gatorade. There's nothing better than Gatorade except for sometimes a cold glass of water. And that's what I had yesterday, this cold glass of water. It was perfect because I was dry and I was parched. The reason that Jesus tells us that rivers of water are gonna flow from you is because that water goes to other people. How important is it that other people have a taste of that cold, refreshing, living water that we have in our souls? You know, Jerry came up here to talk about Beautiful Week. I, I think there's nothing more beautiful than to bring somebody who needs a cup of cold water, a cup of cold water, to provide for somebody drinking water, to provide for others who are in need. This is what we do as Christians because the living water that comes from Jesus is within us. So the question is, what kind of water is in your life? It either is providing for life or it's destroying it. Jesus says, all who believe in me will have living water flowing from within them. We pray, let's join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us living water through your son, Jesus Christ. Today, as we have a cup of cold water, whenever that is, Lord, remind us of the living water that flows from within each one of us. As we believe in Jesus, as we follow him in faith, as we share his living water with others. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. amen. We continue with our hymn of praise.
Please stand as we join together confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join together in prayer. Oh, and I might add, uh, we're going to pray for Puerto Rico, which is a great example of water and its destruction. So let's keep them in our prayers this week as well. Please join me in prayer. O Lord God, you are a God of mercy and compassion. You are slow to anger and abounding in love. And so we come to you humbly today, thanking you for your provisions, thanking you for your grace, thanking you that you have given us your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to be the living water in our souls. God, help us to share this water with others. Guide us in ways that we can be that water for others. Lord, we think about beautiful wheat coming up. I ask, Lord, that you would stir in us, stir in us the, the, the desire and the passion to change our community, to bless others. Lord, maybe it's through the simple things. Maybe it's through a cup of cold water. Whatever it may be, Lord, slow us down in our fast-paced lives. Open up our hearts and our minds to see the need that is in our own community. Help us to be living water. And Lord God, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ from Puerto Rico. After the, after the devastation of Hurricane, Lord, we, we, um, we know that you're with them. We know that even in their struggle, God, that you are near. And so, Lord, I pray that you would work through your church in Puerto Rico. Lord, that you would work through um, Christians near and far to bring support and to bring living water to every life, to every family in Puerto Rico. God, we pray for those who are suffering in our midst. I pray especially for those who are dealing with cancer, Lord. I pray that you would wash over them with your living water, God, that you would heal wounds, that you would bind brokenness, God, that you would bring healing to our friends and family. And Lord, today we lift up Wellington Heights and our partnership with uh, Keon and Stephanie. They truly are living water in the Wellington Heights community. Lord, we pray for their continued work there, and we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon them. God, we pray for all churches in Cedar Rapids that we might together be living water for our community. So Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer this morning. And we come to you now as a family of believers praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord as you go on your way. May God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you with God's living water to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We close by singing our last hymn. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.